The 2023 recession has been canceled, or has it? Recent data could point to a soft landing that many economists thought impossible just a couple of months ago. And I know this is confusing. It seems like every single day we get new economic news that contradicts data from the day before. And the reality is that some economic indicators are showing that the US economy is performing pretty well, while others are flashing ominous signs about a potential recession. So which is it? Is the US heading towards a recession in 2023? Or can the Federal Reserve actually pull off the soft landing, which is basically just a slowing of the economy without a recession? Can the Fed actually pull this off? In this video, I'm going to share some new data that exposes what is actually happening at the core of the US economy and examine whether or not we're going to enter a recession in 2023. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Dave Meyer. I'm the vice president of data and analytics at Bigger Pockets, which means I get to study economics, the housing market, and all of the different information and data that helps you as a real estate investor make informed investing decisions. And I have a pretty exciting announcement. Every single week going forward, I'm going to start Start doing news, data, economic, housing market analysis here on the Bigger Pockets YouTube channel. That's every single Wednesday. So if you haven't subscribed or set up your notifications to the Bigger Pockets YouTube channel, now would be a very good time to do it because you don't want to miss all the news and data and information I'll be sharing every single Wednesday to help you be an informed investor. All right, let's talk about this recession and what is actually going on. And the first things first, I just want to admit that when people were talking about the potential of a soft landing, which again just means a slowdown of the economy, like enough of a slowdown to tamp down inflation, but not actually getting into a recession. When people were talking about this just like five or six months ago, I kind of thought it was absurd. I was like pretty comfortably in the there will be a recession in 2023 camp. I am less certain now, and I'm going to share my full thoughts later in this video, but I just want to say now that recent economic data is showing that a recession is far from a sure thing. It's just a lot more cloudy. A couple of months ago, to me, it seemed like everything was pointing to there being a recession. Now there's some conflicting information. So that's why we're making this video. I dug into this issue. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a case for a recession. Like what data supports the idea that there might be a recession in 2023? Then we're going to look at a case for a soft landing, what data supports that thesis, and then we're going to discuss which one we think is the most likely. Let's start first and just say the case for a recession. The number one thing I think that points to a probability of a recession is consumer spending. Consumer spending is really just the engine of the entire U.S. economy. It actually makes up 70% of gross domestic product. That's called GDP. If you don't know what GDP is, that's just basically a measurement of all the economic output of the United States. And 70% of it comes from consumer spending. That's stuff that you and I spend our money on. It's all personal household expenditures. This could be like good stuff you buy at a store. It could be vacations. It could be services, whatever. Consumer spending is massive. Consumer spending drives the U.S. economy. And the reality is that it has been down two months in a row. To me, this is a pretty big risk of a recession because after years of high inflation and a lot of economic pessimism, it just seems like many Americans are starting to cut back on spending and they're preparing for difficult times ahead or they've eroded their savings or their stimulus or whatever it is. They're just spending less money and that is not a good sign for economic growth. The other thing I'll just say about consumer spending is that there's this really reliable and good survey that the University of Michigan does where they measure consumer sentiment every single month. And it is extremely low. It just shows that consumers are very pessimistic about the economy. And it is up a little bit. It was really low in the summer of 2022. It's come up a little bit, but like in a historical context, it is still really low, which to me does not bode well for a quick rebound in consumer spending. So that is my number one reason I think there, and you know, one of the main reasons I've thought of late that there would probably be a recession. Now, the number two thing is layoffs. And honestly, the, the housing market, you know, the labor market, I'm going to talk about during case for soft landing and recession because it's super confusing. But there have been some really high profile layoffs, and I do think it's worth addressing. You see some of the biggest, most valuable companies in the world, like Amazon and Microsoft and Google, Goldman Sachs, 3M, all these huge companies, you can name a million of them. They have started laying off tens of thousands of people. And we have seen continuing unemployment claims. That's the data point I, I think is really helpful here. 
is continuing unemployment claims have ticked up recently. And this is an indication that when someone is laid off, basically it's taking them longer to find a new job. So that is not a great sign for the labor market. And we're going to talk about this more in, in the soft landing section because, again, the labor market is just super weird. But the, the sense is that this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? These big companies are seeing what's coming and they're starting to make layoffs. Some of the smaller companies haven't yet felt the pain yet, but this is just the tip of the iceberg and there's going to be a lot more layoffs in the near future. Generally speaking, it hasn't happened yet. Actually, as of today, the 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 January unemployment figures came out and they were lower, which is crazy. But any increase in the unemployment rate, if these layoffs, you know, take hold and they start to grow, and there's more and more and more of them, then that would probably increase the likelihood of a recession. Obviously, when people get laid off, they spend less money that would further drag down consumer spending um, and probably put us into a recession that hasn't materialized yet. But there is some sense that it could be starting. The third thing I want to talk about is a little bit wonkier, which is called the inverted yield curve. Maybe you've heard about this. A lot of economists and pundits on TV talk about this because the yield curve is one of the best and most reliable predictors of recessions since over the last like 40 years. And it has been inverted for all of 2023 and it was inverted for a lot of time of 2022. And basically when that happens, it usually means that there is going to be recession like six to 18 months from the point it starts to invert on a consistent basis. Now, if you're wondering what an inverted yield curve even means, I know it's just like this weird term. Basically, it means that the yield, you know, the amount of money you make on a short-term U.S. Treasury, so like a bond that the government issues for a short one, there's, there's some that are two years long. That's a very common short-term bond. So the yield, the amount you earn on a two-year bond is actually higher than the yield on a long-term bond. And this is very unusual because typically yields on higher uh, are higher on long dated bonds. So that 10 year bond is usually going to have a higher interest rate than lower rated bonds because people who buy a bond for a long term need to be compensated for the higher risk of inflation and default. And so usually those are longer. And there's a good way to measure this. I'll put it up on the screen. But a good way to measure this is the difference between that 10 year bond and that two year bond. I'm going to throw that up on the screen. And as you can see, that has turned negative. When this turns negative, that means that the yield curve has is inverted and it has now, as you can see, been inverted for a while. And this happens, you know, I just explained sort of like the logistics, but basically why this happens is that investors are betting on a long term interest rate decline. They are they are betting that the economy is going to slow down and therefore interest rates are going to go down in the long run. And I know this might seem a little odd because we know that the Fed is raising rates, but the yield curve inversion reflects market sentiment that the U.S. will enter a recession probably in late 2023 or early 2024, and then the Fed is going to have to cut interest rates. It will also drive down bond yields, and for that reason, they think that interest rates are going to go down in the future, and that's why the yield curve has inverted. And, I, you know, if you don't follow all this, it's okay. What you really need to know is that over the last half century or so, the yield curve, when it inverts for any like significant amount of time, if it does it for a day, it doesn't really matter. But if it, if it inverts for any significant amount of time, a recession usually follows. It has only gotten it wrong once in the last 40 years. So the fact that the yield curve has inverted and stayed inverted for a while is a very strong case for a recession coming in the next year or so. There are plenty of other things going on that point to a recession. Um, you know, high inflation, decreased uh, savings. I'm not going to get into everyone. Those are just three things I wanted to point out. Now I'm going to go to the case for a soft landing. Again, I didn't really necessarily think this was really likely uh, a couple months ago, but there is some stuff that's happening that is worth mentioning. So the first thing about a soft landing and why I think it's more likely now than it was a couple months ago is that inflation is declining, right? It is still extremely high. It's still in the mid sixes. But if you look at the chart that I'm throwing up on the screen, the trajectory, it's just really clear. It's become very likely that inflation will become somewhere between two and 4% in the next couple of months. The Fed's target is around two, two and a half percent. And so it is possible that we'll reach that in the next couple of months. And this is super important, right? Because if, if it continues, if inflation continues to decline, the Fed could stop raising interest rates, and that is lifting one of the biggest recessionary pressures in the entire economy right now, right? If the Fed stops raising rates because inflation is going down, they might even cut rates, actually, and that would bode well for avoiding a recession because it would probably stimulate the economy a little bit. Okay, so that's number one. The second one is that the labor market is surprisingly strong. I know there are tons of headlines about these layoffs at big companies for people who make a lot of money. 
But when you look at the other sectors of the economy, they're still adding a ton of jobs. The job report that came in for January is honestly crazy. The, the economy added more than 500 thousand jobs and the unemployment rate went down. It went down from 3.6% to 3.4%, meaning that in January of 2023, the unemployment rate went down. That is crazy. There are still more than 10.5 million job openings in the U.S., which is far more people that are looking for a job. That really bodes well. And of course, you know, there's a lot of job openings. That doesn't necessarily mean that the people who are looking for work are well suited for the jobs that are open, but it is a good sign for the U.S. economy that hiring is accelerating right now, um, and that's another case for perhaps a soft landing. The third one is just GDP growth, right? I mean, most people measure a recession by two consecutive quarters of GDP growth, and we just found out recently that GDP is increasing. It grew at a 2.9% annualized rate in the Q4 of 2022, and basically, by definition, basically means that we are not in a recession. And, and, and this is on an inflation adjusted basis. Like if you look at the real inflation adjusted GP, GDP, it is growing right now, not at any blistering pace, of course, but it is growing. And that is a good sign for the U.S. economy. So those are just three of the several reasons that several data points that I've been looking at that suggest a soft landing. Another one is that housing market activity has started to pick back up. That's not necessarily going to stick around. None of this is necessarily going to stick around. But the whole game of, you know, economic forecasting and analysis is like we have to use the data that we have. And so I'm looking at the data that we have and what it's suggesting is a very murky picture. So I wanted to see what economists say, and they're sort of mixed, but I thought the most relevant data point to share with you all was that Bloomberg did a survey a couple of weeks ago, so it doesn't have the most, most accurate data or recent data. But as of a couple of weeks ago, maybe all January, they did a survey and 70% of economists think that we were entering a recession. So even despite the good news, relatively good news about the economy, most economists still think that we are entering a recession. As for what I personally believe, I still think there is a serious risk of recession. You know, I, I, I think I am encouraged by the news that we've seen but I still think the more likely scenario is that there is a recession, but I'm not that convinced of it anymore because I do think there is like a reasonable chance that a soft landing is possible. Again, the reason I think that a recession is still likely is because of consumer spending. I really just think if consumers decline their spending, that is going to drag on GDP and that could put us into a recession. But ultimately, I think the labor market is going to be the X factor here. And we just don't know enough. As of today, it does look like the labor market is holding up. But, you know, these things do tend to sort of spiral and, you know, we really just don't know what's going to happen. So obviously, we're going to have to keep an eye on this. But my general thinking is that a recession is still more likely than not. But I think the thing that I'm learning from doing this analysis is that even if we do have a recession, I think it's not going to be that bad, right? You know, it, a lot of people, I know a lot of people on YouTube who want to get clicks are saying doom and gloom that everything's going to be terrible. But when you actually look at the things that determine what is going on in our economy, if you actually look at the data, it doesn't suggest that the economy is doing all that badly. And there's some suggestions that's actually doing pretty well. I really encourage you rather than just like get reading the doom and gloom headlines, to do some of this analysis, follow some of these data points for yourself, and you'll be able to determine what is happening in the U.S. economy and how you can make your decisions. The last thing I want to talk about before we go is what does this mean for real estate investors? And of course, recessions have impacts on every single American, not just investors. But I do want to just remind you that there is a big implication for the housing market if we go into a recession or not. Generally speaking, global recessionary pressures, like when there are global, you know, a lot of global economies are facing the prospect of a recession. This has a big impact on mortgage rates. Basically what happens is in a recessionary environment, investors from around the world push money into the U.S. treasuries. It is generally considered the safest investment on earth. And so investors from all over the world pour money into U.S. bonds. What happens then is that pushes down bond yields, right? There's all this demand for bonds and bond yields and, and bond prices work inverted. So when more people want bonds, that means that the yields go down. Mortgage rates and bond yields follow each other. They are almost perfectly correlated. And so if this recessionary pressure happens and bond yields go down, mortgage rates will go down too. So that could bode well for housing market activity. And there's this saying about recessions and the housing market. It's basically that housing is the first in, first out in a recession. And I think that it could be play out here if we do, in fact, go into a recession. When the Federal Reserve or when global banks start to raise interest rates to cool off an economy, housing is often the first thing that is impacted. It, it, housing is a, because it is 
such a highly leveraged asset, meaning people use debt and loans to pay for it, because it is so highly leveraged, is very interest rate sensitive. And so when the Fed starts to raise rates, housing is one of the first things that is negatively impacted by those increasing rates. Housing makes up about 16% of GDP. So when housing slows down because of higher rates, it could pull the economy, the entire economy into a recession because it's so much of GDP. Then we go into a recession. And like I said, all of this money flocks to the safety of US Treasury that pushes down bond yields, that pushes down mortgage rates. And all of a sudden, it's a really good buying opportunity for housing investors. And so that people start or homeowners and people start to buy again. And that increased activity in the in the housing market pulls the entire economy out of recession. That's why people say it's first in, first out. The housing and the housing market can drag the economy into a recession and then it pulls the economy out of a recession. And that has happened a lot over historically, and it does look like that could be a scenario that plays out here. Obviously, we don't know, but that is exactly why I'm going to be making these videos every single Wednesday to check in on economic information. My goal here is just to give you unbiased information to present the data as I see it. I am doing my best I can to forecast these things, but we're just going to have to take the information as it comes and I'm going to update my opinion and my forecast based on that. So make sure to stick around and check in with me every single Wednesday where I'll be hosting these. If you have any ideas or thoughts about how you want to, you, the shows you want me to do, topics that you want covered, you can put them in the in the comment section below or you can hit me up on Instagram where I'm at the Data Deli. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and set up those notifications so you get alerted to when these new videos come out. I'll see you next Wednesday.